So today's lecture is going to be on human impact of evolution, uh, and this has to do a lot with how evolution is happening in the world today and how humans are affecting it. So, so the essential question is, are humans affecting evolution? And the answer is yes, and there are a couple ways they can do this. Um, and so some of those are because of things like medicine, technology, and society, and it's also because humans are changing the environment around them. Because organisms have to adapt, um, that causes the the organism to have to change to the new environment that humans are causing. So first off, what's happening to human populations over time? Um, so here's just a couple of examples to help you think about. Uh, the first is being eyesight, second disease, and height. Um, so human populations are changing due to things like technology, eyesight in terms of our population. If we look around, we have a lot of people who use glasses and contacts that might not have survived before. Uh, we also have things like eyesight surgery, uh, stigmatisms, a lot of things that people are surviving through and having children with, um, including myself. I have really poor vision. I would not have survived in a regulated population, um, but due to technology and human interaction and involvement, it's allowing me to live. Uh, another one being, the second one being diseases. So, for example, back in the Oregon Trail, you know, you would have died of things like dysentery. You would have died from a lot of different diseases, but that doesn't happen today. Uh, the last thing that's been going on, the last example I want to touch on is human height. So human height has been on the rise due to better things like better nutrition. Um, before, so we talked a little about epigenetics in our last unit, meaning the interaction of the environment with your genes. And so with the change in environment, we can activate genes causing an increased height. So in areas with more uh, diet, better diet and better nutrients, uh, the average population is taller uh, because their genes are able to interact with a better environment in terms of nutrients. So what has technology done to the population? So because of that, we can decrease selective pressure. So life expectancy has gone up. If you think a lot about infant mortality rate or the rate at which infants die, that has decreased a lot from the ancient times. The other thing we could do is we can modify existing traits and create genetically modified organisms. So for example, in our lower right-hand corner, you can see things like bacteria, uh, rabbits, and take genes from something and put them in something else. So that sounds kind of radical at first, but we do also realize that genetically modified organisms have been going on for many generations. So what are GMOs? GMOs are things that have been modified by through selective breeding. For the most part, they are not dangerous. The only major thing would be in terms of allergies. Uh, you might not expect to see a corn gene in, for example, a peach. Um, but GMOs and genetically modified organisms have been going on for a long time, changing from selective breeding to crossbreeding. Uh, so things like grapples, grape apples or uh, apples that taste like grapes, uh, there's a lot of ways to create genetic variation and speed up uh, selection, particularly artificial selection. So for the most part, GMOs are not dangerous. You can look it up yourself and weigh the issue, but it is something that you're going to have to think about for the future. So how else can we see evolution? We can see it in artificial selection, where humans choose whether traits matter. Uh, and this is especially evident in agriculture and animal husbandry, where humans are trying to take advantage of evolution to get traits that they would like. So here's a couple examples. Uh, on the left side, we can look at dog breeds. So dogs originally started from wolves. And from there, we saw a couple different examples leading into things like pugs, or Dalmatians, Dobermans, Wiener Dogs, or sorry, Dash Hounds, Dachshunds. Um, but even just looking at the pug from 1880 to today, we're talking about 120, 130 years the pugs have changed a lot just because people have been like, oh, look at this curly tail. Cool, let's make a curly tail with a curly tail, and we get more curly-tailed dogs. Same with the squashing face, uh, and this is also an issue for selective breeding and inbreeding. Uh, in the middle up there, we have the first original banana. Today, bananas have been, you know, uh, bred to not have seeds and be elongated and to ripen. Uh, the original bananas are full of seeds and are not something that humans might want. Uh, we also have different breeds of horses, uh, so very similar to the dog story. And we could also look at another example of artificial selection with the cow that has been bred over time to be extremely muscly. And that's not steroids, that's just the way they're born. Uh, and that's through mating moms and dads that look similar to get traits that you would like. So what else are humans doing uh, to affect evolution? They can change the environment. And so this is something that we've seen. Humans have not been around for that long. Uh, but even looking at humans, we're causing changes. So, for example, uh, nicotine in nests. Nicotine keeps away bugs and pesticides. So as a bird, it would be a behavioral adaptation or something that changes in your behavior that would be helpful to help your offspring. If you keep bugs away from your eggs, that would be an advantage. So some birds are building their, their 
nests with nicotine with cigarette butts because that prevents other things from affecting them. The other one we're thinking about is climate change. As the world warms up, different plants and animals have to learn to survive. With warmer temperatures, different water salinities or saltiness, uh, especially in things like the ocean, different levels of acidity. That's something we'll get into more with ecology, but just realize that humans are causing a lot of changes themselves. Lastly, you want to talk about the loss of habitat. Humans are changing the environment and causing rapid evolution by forcing animals to evolve into either new environments or in restricted environments. Normally, if you have 100 miles of land to roam in, you have to adapt and change if there's only 50 miles of land that you'd have to live in, causing different kinds of stress on an organism. So to kind of wrap up, those are a lot of different examples, and I'm sure you could brainstorm many more, and that would be a good kind of exercise for you, is to kind of think of how else are humans affecting evolution. But in conclusion, we, want, we know that humans are making a big difference in evolution. Evolution is happening to us right now, uh, today, because of these selective pressures and changing the environment. So by changing selection on our cells, we're modifying evolution, and by changing the environment, we're affecting evolution in other species. So that kind of wraps up this lecture. If you have any questions about what's going on with evolution, make sure to give me a ring, shoot me a message. Uh, but again, we're wrapping up the idea of evolution and the role that humans play in it. It's a big role and something we should be conscious of. So do the right thing. Keep in mind, what are you doing with all your actions? Whether it's getting vaccinated, whether it's using antibiotics, you're making a difference in evolution.